Ooh, almost an even split. Yeah. Very nice. It's awesome. Cool. Big round so of applause for, for putting those poll answers up this time. <laughs> <laughs> but I think uh, they're probably curious who we are too. So if we go to the next we slide. Come? Yes. Surprise, surprise. Uh, I'm Jess, I'm your host, and you're we're joined with Kyle, Rachel, and Ben tonight. So say hi, kind of introduce yourselves. We'll start with you first, Kyle, since you have a really cool picture up there. Yeah, hi, my name is Kyle Waters. Uh, I studied physics uh, in undergrad and then got a PhD in astrophysics from Stanford University. I now teach at CSU Sacramento, um, where I also get to run the state-of-the-art planetarium we have in there. So I teach both physics and astronomy um, and spend a lot of time under the stars, both the real ones and the fake ones we have in the dome. Austin spent the, the whole first time being like, I don't get this joke about my name. Yeah, why, is, why is this <laughs> random guy talking about my last name? <laughs> nah, we got the same last name. Me and you, Austin. We go way back somehow, somewhere. Uh, should I hand it off to Rachel? Or should I say yeah. more? I don't know. See, this oh, is no, my no. first Well, I mean, is anybody, I don't know, any pressing questions for Kyle out there? Right now at the beginning, yeah. What do you guys want right. to know? <laughs> what are okay. stars? What about Rachel? What, yeah, what are stars? They're big and hot. Well, that answers all of my burning questions for Kyle. So I'll just <laughs> hop on in. I'm Rachel. Um, I have the least fun picture in this group up there. And I'm a creative story developer with Sketchy. So uh, I work on a bunch of different stuff when it comes to creating the stories behind the sketches and working on the scripts and the art that all come together to make them fun. Um, I'm here to help you with physics today because I took physics pass fail in undergrad. I did not enjoy one minute of it and I did not go to my final because I did not need to show up to get my 70%. So <laughs> I promise I've learned a little bit more since then. Um, but I definitely uh, sympathize if you are a bio student trudging through physics to try to get those requirements. Um, and prior to coming to Sketchy, I studied biology and specifically was working on monkey behavior. And while at Sketchy, you get to keep studying monkey behavior. <laughs> You're not wrong. Uh, I'm... Ben, uh, I'm the creative director here. I used to be a urologist until I realized I didn't want to be a urologist anymore. Uh, as you've already seen, I may tell a few dad jokes here and there. Kyle and I actually are going to be in a little bit of a dad joke off, maybe. At least in our when we do our creative sessions where we come up with the lessons, it turns into really a, a festival of, <laughs> of punnery. So be warned. <laughs> Uh, cool. Yeah, so we'll, we'll keep the uh, intro brief, um, just so we can jump right into the lesson. I mean, after all, we have to get through a snail race, so that might take some time, um, but I think um, we should be able to get through this in, in 30 minutes or less, because uh, we definitely want to leave enough time for you to ask questions, um, but at any time, feel free to, to drop any questions, either in the chat or in the Q&A function. Um, yeah, that's what we're here for, to answer all your burning questions. And then stick around at the end. Um, we definitely want to get your feedback on this session. And then we'll reward one lucky uh, winner with a, a sketchy subscription. So stick around for that. Um, so yeah, it's definitely worth your time. Uh, so if you know what sketchy is, you know how fun and awesome it is. But if you don't know what sketchy is, uh, it's, it's as hopefully the, the pictures kind of give away a visual learning platform. It's used by basically all the med students. I used it, in fact, when I was a med student. Um, and the reason that med students and other students love it so much is because it really helps you learn. Uh, it helps you understand and then really retain all this kind of complex, complicated, and at times even dry material. Uh, and that in turn helps you improve your scores and uh, you know, be a better son, daughter, brother, sister, whatever. 
that are a human being, a citizen of Earth. So really, it's kind of amazing. But I'm biased. Uh, if you're wondering if Sketchy would work for you, if you like to remember stuff very quickly and retain it forever without having to work too hard, and you like to actually do fun stuff with your time, then Sketchy is for you. So if you have a radial pulse, which you can feel right now on your wrist, then Sketchy is for you. <laughs> uh, so welcome. All right, so our Sketchy MCAT program spans uh, across eight different courses. Uh, and each one, each unit has a unique theme. Uh, right now we're at 250 lessons, uh, which is awesome. Um, so I think I already said today, we'll, we'll focus on physics. Um, but Ben, do you want to tell us a little bit more about the universe we're about to, to dive into? Yeah, so one thing that's kind of special about our MCAT uh, program is that each of the courses, so physics and biochem and cell bio, inside of our MCAT uh, umbrella has a, a unique theme to it. Uh, so physics is kind of fantasy themed. Um, and then within physics, each unit has its own specific theme so that you can help keep the lesson straight in your mind when you're on the test and you're trying to think back, okay, how did the, the lenses work again? You'll think, oh, right, lenses, light and optics, that was the elves. And if you're thinking elves and you're thinking like Legolas or whatever, long flowing hair, very serious. That's not, <laughs> that's not our kind of elves. <laughs> our kind of elves are the ones who, uh, apparently spend a lot of time at the bar um, uh, and in this particular lesson we'll be getting up to some some funny hijinks uh, so yeah that's that's where we'll be today in elf land awesome so instead of playing the video we're gonna walk you through each symbol uh, to feel, familiarize yourself with the lesson content so i think from here uh, rachel and kyle will take it away for us yeah, let's do it. Yeah, all right. So <clears throat> we are in the wonderful world of Elfland. Uh, if any of you have seen any of our earlier uh, light and optics lessons, you might have met Herbert. Um, we had a lot of fun naming our elves. Uh, so Herbert was a main character. But for this particular lesson today, we're going to focus on Herbert's troublemaking cousin, Norbert. Uh, and so Norbert is going to be one of the stars of our show today. Um, and what Norbert is doing, along with some of his buddies here, uh, is partaking in one of the most popular, uh, long-standing, famous elven pastimes, which is a snail race. Um, I'm sure all of you have probably been to a couple snail races at some point in your life um, because they're just, you know, so widespread and popular. Um, but we've got one going on right here. And uh, you can see that it's already the evening because snail races take a while. Um, so a snail race, this snail race has been going on for something like 18 hours now. Um, because it started early in the morning and we're still going, right? This is uh, the elven version of the Kentucky Derby uh, with all of the drinking and none of the classy clothes. Um, so that's, that's what we're getting up to. And, and just to be clear, like nothing on the slide, you know, yet yeah, really has much to do with refraction. Um, if we well, actually, we, we already went for it, we added. So we do have some stuff here that has appeared, right? So uh, we've got Norbert there holding the drink and he's got the big flashy blingy N uh, medallion around his neck. Um, the lowercase letter N in physics in light and optics represents the index of refraction of a material. Um, we use N because N is the second letter in the word index, I guess. Um, so there's no, a little... I, know that. I, I was taken. <laughs> uh, we've got a little pop in here. So every substance in the universe has a value of N. Um, and generally, this is not something you'll need to memorize. So generally, be given these uh, in an MCAT type setting. Um, but here's just a few uh, example numbers for you. Um, for what it's worth, outer space, like the vacuum of emptiness of nothing that is space, has an N of exactly one. Um, and that's as small as it can get. The smallest it can be is one. Because really, what this means is how much does light slow down? Um, it turns out light actually slows down when it travels through materials. You might think, well, shouldn't it travel at the speed of light? Well, it does if nothing gets in its way. And so in, in the emptiness of outer space, light will move at the speed of light. But through anything else, it's going to slow down a bit. And the bigger your N gets, the more it is slowing light down and the slower light will move. Um, and so we've got uh, in Norbert's hand, there is a glass of gin. And not just any gin, it's slow gin. 
And uh, I would imagine probably that most of you aren't familiar with slow gin. Maybe some of you are. You're right. Shout out in the chat if you actually yeah, know pop, what slow gin is. Pop something in the chat if you've ever heard of slow gin before. I Googled it right before this, just in case it came up. So I'm ready. I'm ready to field this question. Right. Yeah. R Rachel, what is slow gin and where does it come from? Slow gin is gin made from slow Kyles. Thanks for asking. Um, <laughs> and so, of course, that was where I got on the internet. And I also am a person who does not know what a slow is. So I Googled that as well. And as far as I can tell, it's some sort of plum type of thing. It's a, it's a stone fruit. If <laughs> Maybe somewhere in between a plum and an apricot. We Rachel, have them on we... the East Coast. Um, they're beach, like they're related to beach plums. I don't know if anybody has ever come across beach plums. I macerated a few last summer. Oh, nice diction. Matt and Ken have been raiding their grandma's liquor closet since they were little, so they know all about that. <laughs> oh, there we go. Yeah, if you were a bartender, there's an even better chance you'd be familiar with slow gin. By the way, with the gin, it's actually spelled S-L-O-E. Um, so, you know, but you can't tell that when I say it out loud. You don't know what letters I'm speaking, just the sounds I make. Don't worry about it. So yeah, slow gin to remind you that the light actually slows down as it goes through his gin. There you go, pretty cool, right? So these are the kinds of examples where you just like, you know, little visuals here that help you uh, pull things back into your mind when you're working through this kind of stuff. And you learned something else new, what a slow berry was. So there you go. All right, so now we're into the thick of it. We got snails on the screen. Um, this is the live action we all came for. Um, and so this, now, this is actually live video right now. You're looking at live. <laughs> if you stick around for another three years, you might see them get to the finish line. <laughs> Stay tuned. Um, and so we sort of jumped ahead of ourselves in a way. We started with talking about index of refraction um, before we actually talked about refraction itself. Um, but that's because those concepts are sort of index of refraction is sort of necessary to understand refraction, which isn't great in terms of naming, but uh, basically. What's happening here is the snail is crossing on from the dirt onto the grass. And when that happens, you can see his trails bending, which is gonna even further delay the time we're watching him get to the finish line. Um, but that is also because refraction is when light bends, the crop crosses from one material into another. And that's all just happening because like Kyle just reminded us, every different material will have a different index of refraction. So light's gonna move through it at a different speed which in turn is gonna cause that bending when light goes from one material into the next. And so now we've got a little bit more uh, jazz going on on the track. You can see some of the, the underlying uh, structure here, although the snails aren't, don't seem too interested in staying in their lane. Um, and so this is all here to help remind us of the really big important equation you're going to need for refraction, which is Snell's law. Um, and of course, now we finally know why we made these snails in the first place for Snell. And this little pal is going to be named Snell, of course. Couldn't pass that up. Um, Snell the snail. Snell the snail. That one is a little easier to remember than slogan. <laughs> yeah, so uh, one of the things that I do, I'd love about Sketchy is the way that these images uh, hopefully make sense as part of our little made up world, but also have very important, useful things to, to help you understand the underlying concepts and like the physics in this case. So we added the little lane lines, right, to the race, but those are actually crucial to understanding the physics as well. Um, because when you use Snell's law, there's, there's two thetas in there, right? You look at that equation, it's got a theta one and a theta two. Theta one is like the angle the light makes on the way in, and theta two is the angle the light makes on the way out. But one of the most common mistakes that students make when trying to apply Snell's law is putting the angle in the wrong place. Um, you look at the little image there below the equation, you see that the angles are measured not actually from the interface between the materials, but from this like imaginary dotted line from the normal, right? This is what uh, as a physics instructor, I have to scream at my classes over and over again. Measure the angle from the normal. Measure it from the normal. Um, so I can there's, see oh, there's, you standing in front of your class ranting about yeah, that. This, I, I do like to scream about science at people. Um, there's also a comment in the chat that there's only one person who's showing 
um, from the panelists, not all of us. So they can't necessarily see who's talking. Um, so I don't know if there's an easy Anyone way for us to help me the whole time. That's terrible. I'm was so it, was it ben? Yeah, you, uh, I'm so sorry. You guys had to be looking at Ben. I mean, at all, least forget the of all of us your background. Get stuck on me with this background, which will make sense at some point. I promise. But God, no. Oh, so uh, okay, Sharon says we can see everyone. So it might actually be on your end. So you guys also have, yeah. So you guys have the ability to change your setup um, of which things you can view. So like way up, I think, in the upper corner of Zoom, you should have a little view option. And you can try a couple different things based on who you want to see, right? If you don't want to see Ben, I think you can just like right click on him. I and think get rid you of can him. turn me off. You know, you I, can I would recommend out of this thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's possible you may have pinned Ben by accident. If you like, go click click the three dots in his corner, you can pin him or unpin him at your discretion. Highly recommend unpinning. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then, yeah, another thing to point out is. Uh, We've got like these nice lane lines to help you remember to measure from the normal, which I know was not intuitive to me at first. Um, but then just like, if you're like, what is, what are you guys even talking about? What is Snell's law in the first place? How am I gonna remember another stupid equation that I'm never gonna use in real life? Um, oh. <laughs> sorry, Kyle. It's a little different <laughs> for, <laughs> for us bio majors out there. <laughs> for the muggles of the world. Right. Uh, I'm sorry, do you not have eyes? <laughs> I use them. I just don't calculate what I use them for on a day to day basis. Um, but yeah, we've got all the different pieces of Snell's Law in here to hopefully help remind you what this is when you've got a big jumble of different equations as you go to st study for the NCAT. Um, so we've got Norbert being the pesky little bugger he is, left some graffiti on the trail, um, and those represent N1 and N2 up and above, um, which is just gonna be the index refraction of the two different materials you're dealing with. And then there's two signs to cheer for Snell. And those are represent this, the value of or using sine. Um, and then what you take the sign of is gonna be theta, which is that angle from the normal that Kyle already helped walk us through. And so right next to the signs in that little angle between snail trail and lane line, we've got these pretty theta shaped flowers. So if you put that all together, you get your whole n sine theta. And that should help you remember all the pieces of uh, Snell's law. n sine theta, there you have it. Uh oh, what did you do? <laughs> I finally brought in the reason for my stupid background. <laughs> It's a streaker. <laughs> uh, Rachel, do you want to take this one? Or do you want me to take this one? Uh, either way, I can start it off and you can Go just for it. jump in whenever you feel the urge. Um, so this little fella is a little dysfunctional compared to the rest of the snail race and crew. Um, I'm assuming Norbert snuck him on there and kind of put him in as an unentered contender. Um, and so the reason he is so dysfunctional is because that he is our symbol for the fact that Snell's law doesn't always work. Yay, fun, we love science. Um, and so um, I think if we go to the next slide, we can see a little bit why the Snell's law can break down in certain circumstances. So this is just a pretty, uh, a rearrangement of the law you saw on the page before where we've got sine theta two, over by itself on the left. Um, and if you guys remember from your high school math days, sign of anything will never be greater than one. Max is out at one. Um, but if you take this right side of the equation, it is possible to have values for N1 and N2 times sine theta one that are greater than one, which means that this equation just doesn't work. Um, and in that, if that's the case, that means refraction just isn't gonna happen. It's impossible. And so that gives us something called total internal refraction reflection, where your light will actually just stay within its original material. It'll bounce off the original material and stay within it, just like this poor little fella is not getting onto that grass to get anywhere near the finish line. He is staying in the dirt. Yeah, yeah and I'm just going to streak in here <laughs> and interrupt you. I keep going. Um, <laughs> so this is one of the things, yeah, one of the things actually that I love about physics um, is that the, the math, which maybe is not your favorite thing, that's fine. 
but the math really does explain how the universe works. And this particular equation, you can break the math, right? You can do something that will make your calculator say error. Um, and, and you might be like, well, how does that apply to the real world? Well, it turns out if you break the math, then you also break refraction. This is the equation. Snell's law is the equation that governs refraction. And if you break that equation, refraction doesn't happen. It actually doesn't happen. That's what happens in the real world. If you make N1 too big and theta1 too big, um, then the light will not go into the other material. It'll be trapped in the first material. This actually does have awesome practical real world applications. The most obvious being fiber optics. Um, fiber optic cables are amazing. And if you like having fast internet, right, say thank you fiber optics. Um, and they rely on this idea of total internal reflection where the light actually gets trapped inside the first material and it literally can't escape. It can't refract just like the streaker doesn't make it up onto the grass. He gets trapped down in the dirt. So it's a really cool application um, of the math to the real world stuff. The joke's on you. I always make my calculators say error. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's a, so that's a pretty cool idea. Um, total internal reflection, right? So and also it's nothing to be careful with, right? We got these two words that sound very similar, refraction and reflection, um, but they don't mean the same thing, right? Refraction is when light bends as it goes from one material to a different material. Reflection is when light bounces off some interface and stays in whatever material it was in in the first place. And I think that pretty much wraps up the whole sketch. I think, right, if we advance, we just get rid of the... Uh, the pip and we've got we've got we've got our snail race there yeah unlike an actual snail race this lesson is actually pretty short and sweet you've been paying close attention that purple snail snail has actually advanced a little bit so a fraction of a pixel yeah <laughs> i do like this this is just kind of a short uh lesson this is a very light lesson hey yo kyle is totally winning the bad joke off <laughs> you know who's who's keeping count you know someone's keeping count in the chat just let us know who's winning the dad jokes i'm just feeling very punny today yeah put you in a penitentiary oh <laughs> so bad you know, there was actually a pun contest at my university and i entered 10 times because i figured one of them had to win right but unfortunately no pun intended Oh, this is bad. I think we better move on. Um, no. <laughs> Scare them away. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Kyle and, and Rachel. That was really uh, awesome. So now you've encoded all these really amazing symbols into our brains. Um, so we've done step one of familiarizing ourselves with the content. The coolest thing about Sketchy um, is you can actually go back. So after you watch the video, we have review cards. And so you can click through all the symbols. Um, you know, just quickly rehearse what you just watched. And then really the icing on the cake is applying uh, the material in your test prep. So whether it's our quiz questions or, you know, other practices games that you're using. So now I guess we do have a little pop quiz for you. Um, and I know earlier there was a mention of calculators. You know, the great thing about the MCAT is no calculators are allowed. So um, any, any tips, Kyle, on when you can't use a calculator? Should we, give, should we wait and see if they can answer the question without a calculator? It's okay to talk about it as they look at this and think about it. Um, cause yeah, cause Matt had a great question in the chat about if I don't have a calculator, how am I supposed to do sine and cosine stuff? Mm -hmm. um, and the answer is, if the MCAT doesn't allow a calculator, it also shouldn't require one. Um, so you're not like you're not going to see like what is the sign of 64 degrees. Um, they'll keep it to kind of like a very limited list. So you should definitely know the sine and cosine of zero, the sine and cosine of 90, um, and then you should maybe know uh, 30 degrees and 45 degrees as well. Like these, so just some things to memorize, right? Um, so sine of zero is zero, cosine of zero is one. Sine of 90 is zero. I'm uh, sorry, sine, sine of 90 is one. Look at that, see, even I got it wrong. We're trying to go too fast. Um, sine of 90 is one, it is, I swear. And cosine of 90 is zero. Um, at 45 degrees, they're the same. That's like, all right, we'll make the memorizing a little bit easier, right? Mother nature was like, I'll give you a break. Um, sine of 45 and cosine of 45 are the same. They're like square root of two over two. Although again, like 
so what's the square root of two? You don't have a calculator. It's, it's, I mean, I guess maybe you just have to memorize that if you're going to need it. Um, and then the sine of 30 degrees is exactly one half, um, which I don't know, that may or may not be important. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Um, yes, and Adam says it's approximately 1.4. 1.414, right? There, I got four sig figs. That's more sig figs. <sighs> All right, so I think we I think we're close here with eighty eight degrees, right? So we're making it easy on them here. Um, but just to to say the question out loud, so a ray of light travels through water, an n of one point three three, and hits the diamond glass containing the water at an eighty eight degree angle with respect to the normal. The light refracts and begins traveling through the diamond at a thirty degree angle measured from the normal which is the closest to the index of refraction of the diamond glass. So when you're ready, just uh, throw your, your answers in the chat, see who gets it right. Uh, and just as a little, a little piece of trivia, there actually is a way that you could do this problem without doing any math at all. What? Yeah, it's that if you were paying attention, we actually showed you the index of refraction of diamond earlier on in this presentation. Oh, it was briefly on the like bit slide. I just want to give a shout out to Katie, put an exclamation point uh, after her letter, asserting confidence in the answer. Yeah. So often in class, I will ask my class a question and someone will raise their hand and I'll, I'll call on them and then they will they will respond in, with the question, right? with the question intonation, right? Like, what do you think the answer is? See? I'm like, see, question mark? I'm asking you, right? Exclamation point. Boom. Mm, Love yes, like drop. <laughs> well, Jess, it looks like everybody I, picked B. I think, is that, is that the right answer? It, oh, it is, yeah. Oh, awesome. Although it's a little different than the answer, than the value we provided for diamond earlier, but this is the closest one. So. It, it is the, that's the joy of multiple choice, right? You just gotta be close. And that's why, that's why you can do things like what Jess was just saying. So the angle here is 88. Um, like, I don't know the sign of 88. I do know the sign of 90 and 88 is close to 90. So let's fudge it. Um, by the way, we do that a lot in astrophysics. We, 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 our error bars are huge. You know, we don't even want to go down that road. Is that why that one lander just like completely missed the planet that one time? <laughs> uh, I, uh, we don't, we, we don't know what you're talking about. The Royal <laughs> we, that never happened. Nobody ever forgot to convert from Imperial to metric units and resulted in a very expensive lander burrowing into the surface of Mars. That didn't happen. Very expensive. Also writing no calculator math problems that are even vaguely realistic really, really hard. I learned that when I wrote this and I have a newfound appreciation for all of my math and physics teachers now because it took me a very long time to come up with this incredibly simple problem that is still not quite accurate. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so what do you think? Ready for some questions? Please do fire away. Open up that Q and A box. What do you want to know? What do you need to know? What are you dying to find out? I was afraid to Google streakers, and so I just picked um, a background image and chose some streaks I, in the sky. I live without fear. I did see some things I wish I could unsee. To be honest. <laughs> In fact, I'm going to put this one away. That's enough of that. That's better. That, that one is pretty amazing. <laughs> All right, you did such an awesome job, Kyle and Rachel. I know. No one has any questions that they're dying to ask. Ben, did you know that the cemetery next to my house is super popular? People are dying to get <laughs> in. <laughs> <laughs> well you gotta work it in it doesn't count if you're just throwing out dad jokes <laughs> um it counts <laughs> yeah it does is there a way to add a transcript to the sketchy stories 
So right now we just, all the videos are closed captioned, um, but we don't actually post the transcripts yet. So um, wait for that feature sometime in the future. Because I agree, that would be awesome. Are the sketchy videos similar to this where someone is explaining the sketch? Yeah, so sketchy actually, I, I, I'm gonna go ahead and answer this because I like talking, even though I'm the one here who like doesn't actually work for sketchy full time. Um, oh, you guys like hire <laughs> professional voice actors, right? To do the narration for the videos, it's great. Yeah, so someone explains the sketch, kind of walks you through and, and sort of does what we did here in a maybe slightly more efficient way. Uh, where they explain the science and the symbols. So we try and teach you what you need to know, but also help you build that framework for understanding and remembering it forever. Uh, there is a similar density of dad jokes, I would say. So <laughs> even Rachel writes a lot of dad jokes. I do. <laughs> yeah. I do. I don't have like the practice, you know, spitting them out in real life yet with children that to, you know, say them on the fly. But when I'm writing, they, they come out for sure. Yeah, so I think in real time, like this video is six minutes long uh, if you're watching it on Sketchy. So yeah, a lot, of jokes. Less, a lot less talking, but the same density of dad jokes, which is yeah. really what I think we're all looking for. Let's think about that. Uh, Matt, why are there so many letters we use in different contexts? I think is when the 27th physicist came up with a variable, like <laughs> had to go back to the beginning. <laughs> yeah, it's a bummer. I don't know, Kyle, can you defend your people? Absolutely, I'll, I'll take them to So yeah, I mean, so uh, you want the smart aleck response? There are more than yes, 26 definitely. things in the yeah. universe. <laughs> so get over it, like make, maybe you should have made a bigger alphabet. Um, and then you can say, well, there are other alphabets. And sure enough, we use the Greek alphabet. We just saw a theta. That's not even in the alphabet. Boom. But then we get in trouble for using Greek letters. People are like, oh, like I, now I have to know Greek letters also. Um, it's all Greek to me. Um, so, I mean, we, we do. And we, um, and we help a little bit. So lowercase versus uppercase is, generally speaking, different. Um, right? So like a capital N will mean something different than a lowercase n. So that actually doubles us from 26 to 52 possible letters. But even then, like we still, I mean, we just, we end up having to reuse stuff. Um, there, there are more things in the universe than there are letters in the alphabet. Uh, so we end up for, for better or for worse recycling. It's also, by the way, the reason that a lot of times the letters aren't as obvious as you would want them to be. Um, because like if we're already using, right, E for like four things, we don't want to make it a fifth thing also. And so, you know, uh, even though some quantity starts with an E, we'll use like a lowercase Greek mu or something. <laughs> uh, Stephen score in the chat when he said it's all Greek to me that did not count in his tally okay you get to decide whether or not my jokes count I'm the scorekeeper <laughs> <laughs> um Alex asked are formulas included when you click on images within a sketch um so when you are watching one of the sketches it's actually a video that's playing and so the formulas will pop up, much like we saw in the slides, but it's an actual video, right? So you'll be looking at the, the image and then a formula will pop up or a little picture in picture will give you a formula that's relevant and then it'll disappear again when it's done. Um, but does, does one of you wanna talk a little bit more about kind of like the flashcards and like the overviews you can do after the fact, the step two? Yeah, well, so you can actually click on a lot of the symbols. Uh, we try to include these, you know, like you saw with, the N and the theta flowers. So if you're clicking on through those in the review card, uh, you will see some of those formulas pop up uh, in the description for the symbols because we want you to review those if they're really important that you should know them. So, so yeah, they're definitely in, in, in the videos, what we call pips, um, our fancy word for figures. And then in the review cards um, is text just to go over the symbols. Uh, you had anything to add? Over all, all MCAT content or only high yield content? Everything. Um, so I think we really prioritize high yield because we want you to learn all the important stuff, the really difficult stuff um, right away. 
Um, we do release content kind of every, every month. Um, so like I said, we're at 250 lessons because we just released 15 more lessons today. And right now we really are prioritizing physics and organic chemistry. So but definitely everything, um, you know, we love the AMC. So we follow, follow the outline. I'm not going to try and touch this one, but I'll pass it on to you guys. You got you got a couple people asking, one in the official Q and A and one in the chat about stats. Have, have you been able to gather any stats on the efficacy of Sketchy? This is see, this is these are asking the real questions. How much is going to boost my MCAT score? These are the hard <laughs> questions. Um, so I think I think the highest increase we've seen uh, is a forty point increase um, from practice to to real. Um, Maybe I'm lying. No, I don't think I am. Um, it's pretty incredible. Back in my day, 40 points was the whole test. <laughs> um, to the person who asked if we've done the randomized controlled trial, that we have not done. Because uh, that's to, to execute. But man, we'd like to. Uh, what else do we got here? Tess, uh, how often do you plan to do these meetings and will there be more? Yeah, so this is number three. So we have number four scheduled, uh, same time next week. And then let us know in the survey. Um, so we will do them if, if you show up. Uh, Sophia says, are there any tips on note taking from the videos? She's been watching the videos and looking at the review cards and doing practices. I'll say that it has been my experience that different students find different note taking strategies to be helpful. Um, and I'll tell you, so I'll give you an example of one um, my wife is uh, what in my family, my family likes to call a real doctor, right? As opposed to whatever I am with my PhD in astrophysics. Uh, my wife is an OBGYN and she had a very specific strategy um, through courses in undergrad and med school, which was she took handwritten notes during class. And when she was going to study, she would retype her own handwritten notes. Um, and for her, that worked really well. Um, because it was like it was like having to write it more than once and in two different ways with handwriting and with typing um and that really kind of helped to solidify things that she had been learning for her um i would never do that in a million years i hate retyping something that already exists um but you know like so uh, try try different things and see if you can find the one that works for you um you know when it comes to to taking notes like i mean so some of you might not even want to take notes at all when you watch a sketchy video and you might just be trying to focus on the visuals and try and kind of burn that image, right, directly into your brain. That's what we're all about is burning things directly into your brain. That's that's the goal here. Brain burning. Um, yeah, to I, I'm completely with you. I'm way too lazy to take notes, uh, which is part of the reason that I love sketchy when I was in med school, because I didn't feel like I really needed to. So I would watch the video typically just once, and then I would use the review card when I needed to refresh my memory on a particular at the time, it was micro, um, but a particular lesson. Um, and that was, you know, I think the power of the sketchy method is that for a lot of people, that's kind of all you need is you watch the video, you kind of get the story, you get that connective tissue, and then you can just kind of, once you've got the symbols in there, you can regenerate that picture in your head and pull it up really fast and kind of jump around and uh, answer questions. So. I want no one thing that worked really well for my friends when they were med students with sketchy was also to like take the review cards and kind of create flashcards with them and either like quiz each other on like this symbol corresponds to what science um, or even like make themselves flashcards on like a PowerPoint deck and flip through them so they could quiz themselves. Um, I know that was something like they would have like parties and do together. And if you're like not going to have a party and study, you can also do it by yourself. Um, <laughs> And I think that's like another thing where like we know sketchy is super effective for helping your memory, 
but like quizzing yourself is also another tool that's been shown to be like one of the most effective ways to uh, like compile memories and make them really long lasting. So like those two together, I know have been like a formula that have worked for a lot of people I know. And Adam, I don't know if you can pop uh, the link to our Discord in the chat, but uh, we have a, a Discord and among the many other fun things going on there is uh, we have a little trial of a way to kind of do that flashcard type studying that Rachel was talking about uh, that we would that we're sort of working on building into sketching where there's a small group of students that are testing that out for us uh, through our Discord. So if that sounds interesting to you, hop over to the Discord and uh, check it out. And I know Adam also posted the link to the survey. Um, so now at this point, we have to scroll back a, a few messages in the, in the chat box. Um, but please do fill out the survey. And there we go. Um, right after this, we promise we're giving away a subscription. Um, it's yeah, it's you, you guys won't see it, but trust me, the smile on Jess's face when you answer the survey questions makes all of our days so much better. So please answer the survey. Plus, if you don't fill it out, oh boy. <laughs> Consequences. <laughs> Yeah, I think, um, you know, we'd like to think that we cover all of the relevant content in the videos. Um, and so like, just keep in mind too, like if, you know, which which part are you failing? So like, did you encode the symbol? So like, maybe you do have to go back and watch the video, you know, another time. Uh, we also have the option to change the speed so you can watch it faster. We just don't recommend 10 speed because, you know, who can understand anything at 10 speed? Um, but then, yeah, just keep using the, the review cards to rehearse. So, um, you know, we know that you probably will have other resources available, um, but definitely for these topics, you know, we, we got you covered. So, all right, I think uh, giveaway time. Giveaway time. Giveaway, all right. So really simple. Um, in the chat box, just put your name and your goal score, and then I will pick one random winner, and then we'll be in touch with you. So, fire away. Since the chat is taken up by everyone's entries, which is great, um, I put in the link to the Discord at exactly the wrong time. Um, uh, you don't worry; uh, uh, it, it, it'll it'll come back again, um, and you should should join us on the Discord. But yeah, link to the survey in the Discord. I'll send it a couple more times before you finish. Final countdown. Last few seconds. Is that everybody? Right, a few sneaking in. Drum roll. <laughs> we should get, we gotta get some sound effect buttons to this slideshow. I think yeah, we want more, right? Sound effects. <laughs> the Jeopardy music going there, right? And then if someone enters after the music ends, we get the sad trombone. <laughs> yes, final countdown by Europe, that would be great. All right, so we have a winner, uh, Desiree. And I'm probably butchering your last name, Desiree. Is it Becher, Becker? Congratulations. All right, Beecher, I, did, I definitely butchered that. But I can remember that because of the beach poems, so. You, you totally um, Beechered that one. Oh, I'm trying to make up lost ground here. <laughs> yeah, congratulations. Um, we'll be in touch. I think we got one one final slide. So 
Um, for those who didn't win, we have good news. Um, you can sign up for a free trial. So definitely go to sketchy.com, sign up. Um, or if you just want to jump right in, um, we have this lovely 10% off code, um, NCAT study 10. So you can buy a subscription, save 10%. So, look at that, look at that smell there. Look at that little smell. Smell the snail. Fully shelled and everything. <laughs> so we in our hearts. <laughs> yeah, just a huge thank you uh, for everyone who attended and for everyone who's going to watch this on YouTube later. Um, you also can go back and, and watch this on YouTube. Um, so, Definitely. Thank you. Thank you, Kyle, Rachel, Ben, and Adam. Uh, this was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for showing up, Kyle, and making a bunch of jokes and stealing my crown. Woohoo! Oh, yeah. So who uh, who, who lost? Or was, I guess who was, won? Kyle Winning, won by losing? I think everyone who had to listen to us lost, is what uh, it <laughs> sounded like. I'm pretty sure I heard someone from the chat say that. So... Oh, 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 Austin's getting in on it. Yeah, yeah a late Austin's entry. In Austin's it. in. <laughs> uh, I Cousin hope, yes, Austin. I, I hope you do spend a lot of time reflecting on what you've learned, even if it was just a light little lesson. Um, you know, there's there's a lot going on there. Does the, I'm curious, YouTube doesn't get the chat though, right? They don't get to see the Zoom chat. No, so they missed all the fun. They missed fun, and, um, and they don't have the link to the Discord. Sorry, sorry, YouTube. Right. No, but they'll get the link to the Discord probably. probably <laughs> yeah, we'll they post it in the video description or something. They have their own chat, but this is the fun chat. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. I should have had the stream open so I could see the YouTube chat too. I think all the cool people are here. <laughs> so, yeah. Thanks again, Adam shared all the links in case you need them um, one last time. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll get to have Kyle back because this was such a treat. So. <laughs> Kyle's like, oh no. And yeah, he's like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you poor doctors to be. You have to put up with me some more. <laughs> oh no. We'll be once. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, remind me of your dog's name that was roaming around in the background. Ruby, yeah, Ruby is Ruby. currently not in the screen sphere, right? But now she's looking at me. Ruby, come here, come say hi. Come say hi, sweetie. We got a German Shepherd over here. Hey, uh, hanging out in the office with me. My faithful teaching companion all through the pandemic. <clears throat> is, uh, <laughs> is she good at physics yet? She, uh, I don't know, she develops high velocities in and small amounts of time, which requires acceleration. She gets huge amounts of kinetic energy. And then she has momentum, which is a vector. I don't know. I'm just, it's, this is a stretch. And, uh, you're you're giving away a free lesson. pretty well, so. <laughs> All right. I think we're, I think we're winding down. We're, our okay. jokes are done. They're, <laughs> they're fading. We're fading, so. Are we, are we going to end the webinar and kick them out. Are we doing a little debrief at all? Traditionally, we stay till the bitter end, but since the number of people in this webinar just went up by one, we're going to be here a while. So I think, I think we got to turn it off. I think we got to put it. I was going to say, so I was, I was trying to keep an eye on the attendees. The biggest number I saw was 47 at one point. 